students so in the previous class uh, we saw the motivation behind writing um, a system of uh, two by two let's say differential equation that means uh, two unknowns and two equations in terms of uh, matrix and from there we motivated that how you can actually write down the solution um, using eigenvectors and eigenvalues and uh, towards the end I briefly mentioned that when we can say that the solution that we have obtained leads to a stable solution or an unstable solution. So today I will continue the discussion and I will write down some criteria with the help of which at least for the linear equation um, you can say uh, that the system is stable or unstable. So let us first define what do we mean by uh, stability. We have the same system dx1 by dt equals to now we no longer write uh, the form so we just write fx1 and fx2 um, let us call it as f1 and uh, dx2 by dt is equals to f2 of x1 comma x2 of course there are initial conditions but uh, at the moment we are not uh, uh, bothered by them so let's call it as equation number one so we denote a variable point a variable point in the plane in the plane by x equals to x1 comma x2 the point uh, x equals to 0 is called uh, an equilibrium point an equilibrium point uh, of the system of the system uh, one this is our one since the solution of 1 uh, with x 0 equals to 0 is x t equals to 0 right. So, the point x equals to 0 uh, 0 vector of course is called an equilibrium point of the system 1 um, since the solution x t uh, since the solution of 1 uh, with x0 equals to 0 is xt equals to 0. So, we define we define the phase space for the system 1 for the system 1 as the x1 comma x2 space right x1 comma x2 space and uh, uh, we want to draw the portrait of trajectories and we want to draw the portrait of trajectories portrait t r a i t of trajectories portrait of trajectories um, x t where t is positive uh, in the space near x equals to 0 in the space near x uh, t equals to 0 um, full stop. So, this can be done um, this can be done uh, with the help of general solution with the help of general solution. The way we have written x t as uh, eigenvector e to the power eigenvalue then c 2 times eigenvector e to the power uh, lambda to the other eigenvalue with the help of general solution right with the help of general solution. So, the portrait now the, the problem is since you have involved eigenvalues, so your portrait will not depend on the eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2. So, the portrait 
will portrait the portrait uh, will depend on eigenvalues. For 2 by 2 system, it is lambda 1 and lambda 2. So, basically, uh, when both the eigenvalues, so when both the eigen, when both, uh, when both the eigenvalues, uh, let me erase both of them. when both the eigenvalues eigenvalues are negative are negative uh, or have negative real parts negative real parts then all the trajectories all the trajectories trajectories converge to x equals to 0 we say that x equals to 0 is a stable equilibrium equilibrium or more precisely more precisely asymptotically uh, stable equilibrium right and uh, when uh, uh, on the other hand on the other hand when uh, at least one of the eigenvalues has a positive has a positive real part then it will lead to lead to it will lead to uh, uh, an unstable lead to an unstable equilibrium unstable equilibrium right so that means x equals to 0 will be an unstable equilibrium or it leads to an unstable solution right so basically um, uh, if you draw the figure so let's say when we have a uh, both so let this is figure a so suppose this is coordinate axis so when we have both lambda 1 positive and lambda 2 positive or at least the real parts are positive then the solution are sort of uh, diverging right this is x1 this is x2 this is our origin v is um, again coordinate axis we have x1 we have x2 and in this case we have uh, lambda 1 less than 0 and lambda 2 less than 0. So, then what will happen? All the solution will converge to origin, right. So, in this case it is leading to unstable solution, uh, sorry stable solution. In this case it is leading to stable solution and uh, part C is the saddle point that means uh, when we have x1 x2 
So we have lambda 1 positive or at least the real part of lambda 1 is positive and lambda 2 is negative. So then in that case uh, this is our um, solution so it will sort of behave like this. Right, so the solution will sort of tries to converse, but then it will always diverge basically. Right, so this is the case for saddle point. Now that uh, we have mentioned uh, the criteria in terms of eigenvalues that when it leads to stable and unstable uh, equilibrium or unstable solution, um, let us. Uh, uh, let us see that uh, how it can be put into a criteria to check, I mean how we can verify. Alright, so since we have already defined um, the equilibrium point, so by the way this equilibrium point, uh, so basically what we are saying is a point, uh, it can be put into another form of the definition, so a point uh, AB is such that such that uh, f1 of ab is equals to 0 and uh, f2 of ab is equals to 0 um, is, is such that this then ab is called the equilibrium point is called as the equilibrium Right. So, now we are not just concerned with the linear right hand side. Um, so, we are saying uh, AB uh, you can substitute uh, um, any uh, point and such that if uh, F1 and F2 if they both become 0. So, here we are going to determine a general condition. So, it may be for linear, it may be for nonlinear right hand side, it will work for both of them. So, how we are going to do it? So, then AB is called the equilibrium point. Okay. Now, um, what we are going to do, uh, let us put uh, x1, uh, small x1 is equals to uh, a plus capital X1 and uh, small x2 is equals to b plus capital X2. Then, what will happen? Uh, we will have fi of x1, x2 is equals to f i of a plus x 1 and b plus x 2. Um, since we have right hand side uh, where there is no discontinuity or anything, so it is always uh, a polynomial type, so we can always differentiate and therefore we have the Taylor series expansion. So, if I do the Taylor series expansion for functions of two variable, it will be f i a b plus del f i by del x i uh, del x 1 uh, evaluated at a b into x 1 plus del f i by del x 2 evaluated at a b into x 2 plus higher order terms right um, the second order terms and all. So, this is the partial derivative evaluated at the point a b. So, basically what do we have if you think about it. Uh, if I write, if we write, if we write a i j is equals to del f i by del x j evaluated at the point a comma b, then what do we have? We have f i of x uh, x 1 comma x 2 is equals to, uh, we have uh, a i uh, 1 x1 plus a i 2 x2 plus uh, higher order derivatives right where i is equals to 1 and 2 1 and 2. So, from here you can write dx i by dt the original equation system of equation f i x1 comma x2 can be think of as a i 1 x1 plus a i 2 x2 plus higher order terms, but since uh, we are uh, looking for the trajectory near 
the origin that means all these x1 x2 and then you have higher orders of x1 and x2 they will all be arbitrary small so we neglect all these terms so here you can write directly a i1 x1 plus a i2 x2 when x1 and x2 are near 0 near 0 so hence the trajectories trajectories of the original system original system near a b is or r uh, r expected expected to behave uh, approximately approximately like the trajectories trajectories of dx1 because this is what we have derived dx1 a11 x1 plus a12 x2 dx2 by dt is equals to a21 x1 plus a22 x2 where uh, a, your equation can be put into the form as d of capital x dt equals to matrix a a of x so the original equation that we started with dx1 by dt is equals to f of x1 x2 and dx2 by dt equals to f2 of x2 x1 x2 so that f1 and f2 can be linear can be nonlinear doesn't matter from there we are basically saying that there is an equilibrium point and uh, that equilibrium point is denoted by ab around ab we are doing this expansion and uh, from there we are sort of coming to the conclusion that the trajectories of our original equation around the point ab will be same as the trajectory of our this equation right and uh, accordingly 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 the point the equilibrium point equilibrium point a b of the system 1 that means the original system of the system 1 is said to be asymptotically uh, stable or just stable or simply stable stable if the equilibrium point x equals to 0 of uh, let us call it as if I have not given equation numbers I will give this as the equation number 2 of 2 uh, is asymptotic is asymptotically asymptotically stable right now uh, if we go back to the criteria for uh, stability so from there uh, we sort of uh, drew the conclusion that uh, eigenvalues must be less than 0 uh, uh, that is lambda 1 and lambda 2 or at least the real part of the eigenvalues must be less than 0. So, from there uh, we sort of come to the for, um, I mean from eigenvalues properties there are some uh, theorems which say that when the eigenvalues or the real part of eigenvalues will be less than 0. So, we will use those theorems and uh, here we will basically write um, this that we conclude we conclude that the equilibrium point the equilibrium point a b of the system 1 is stable if and 
only if so when the traces that means a11 plus a22 is less than 0 that means uh, um, del f1 by del x1 plus del f2 by del x2 is less than 0 at the point of course a comma b and uh, that means the trace basically so this is a trace trace uh, of del f i del x j is less than 0 and del f 1 by del x 1 del f 2 by del x 2 minus del f uh, 1 by del x 2 uh, del f 2 by del x 1 is positive which is basically determinant of del f i by del x j is positive. So basically this um, and of course they are all evaluated at the point AB. So this del f i by del x j when we are evaluating this uh, note that note that this del f i by del x j when we are writing in terms of matrix. So this is nothing but our uh, Jacobian of uh, f1 f2 Jacobian of f1 f2 with respect to um, x1 x2. So this is del of f1 f2 del of x1 x2 this is our matrix del f1 by del x1 uh, del x1 del f1 by del x2 then we have del f2 by del x1 and then del f2 by del x2 evaluated at a comma b right. So basically when you are given a um, linear or non-linear system does not matter uh, the right hand side you have to find out the Jacobian with respect to x1 and x2 evaluate it at the equilibrium point and from there we just have to check these two criteria. if both of them are satisfied then it leads to a stable solution if not then it leads to an unstable solution. I um, will solve one example for you and we will see what do we actually mean by so now this criteria is independent of whether you have a linear or non-linear right hand side. So let us see one example. Uh, example 1 consider the system consider the system dx dt is equals to 2 x square minus x y minus of 1 and dy dt is equals to y minus x. So check the stability stability around the equilibrium point solution. So we can determine the equilibrium point very easily let a b be the equilibrium point such that such that we have f1 of a b is equals to 0 and f2 of a b is equals to 0. So from here what do we get we will have 2 a square minus a b minus 1 equals to 0 and b minus a equals to 0. So, if I substitute b is equals to a then it will be 2a square minus a square minus 1. So, from here basically I will get um, a is equals to plus minus 1 and b is equals to plus minus 1. But uh, out of these uh, for which values it is actually becoming 0. So, if you take a is equals to 1 and b is equals to 1 then it is becoming 0. If you take a is equals to minus 1 and b is equals to minus 1 then also f1 and f2 both becoming 0. However, if you take a is equals to 1 and b is equals to minus 1 then it will not work. So, you have to and similarly if you take a is equals to minus 1 and b is equals to 1 then again it will also fail. So, the equilibrium points the equally Brium points are 1 1 and minus 1 minus 1. Now we will check the stability. So let us find out the Jacobian J of F1 F2 or uh, del of 
f1 f2 by del of x comma y okay so we have uh, del of uh, f1 so this is del f1 by del x del f1 by del y then we have del f2 by del x and del f2 by del y okay so let us do that so if i do del f1 by del x so then it will be 4x minus y right and del f y del f1 by del y so that is minus of x um, then we have del f2 by del x so that is minus 1 and del f2 by del y is 1 all right now we'll check at the individual points so j of uh, f1 f2 uh, at a comma b that means uh, 1 1 this value is um, 3 minus 1 minus 1 and 1 and uh, Jacobian of f1 f2 at the point minus 1 minus 1 will be minus 3 minus 1 1 and 1. So, first of all we will check uh, the trace is becoming 0 or not. So, here I have a 1 1 plus a 2 2 which is 3 plus 1 that is 4. So, this is positive and this implies that 1 1 is not the stable point is not the stable point because uh, the trace has become uh, positive. Now, here uh, if I do a 1 1 plus a 2 2 that means minus 3 plus 1 which is minus 2 that is less than 0. Now, we still have to check the determinant. Now, determinant will be uh, uh, minus 3 into 1 and uh, minus minus plus. So, this is minus 2. So, this is also less than 0. So, this also leads to uh, minus 1 minus 1 is not an is not the stable point. So, this also leads to an unstable point right. So, both of them are leading to uh, unstable point and uh, basically we are not getting any stable equilibrium in this case. Um, we can always uh, take the uh, this um, uh, how to say this matrix route because after doing that uh, Taylor series expansion we ended up getting a linear equation. Let us go back uh, here we ended up getting a linear equation. So, for this equation we can follow the matrix route. So, when you follow the matrix or basically your matrix is A11, A12, A21 and A22 right and uh, from here you find out the eigenvalue. When you find out the eigenvalue uh, we can see that the two eigenvalues uh, will be um, 2 plus minus uh, square root of uh, 2. So, if I take this equation A11, A12 um, and then A21, A22. So, basically our matrix will be uh, where is that? So, A11, A12, A22, A21. So, basically our uh, at uh, 1, 1. Um, so, alternatively you can do this also. Alternatively, alternatively uh, the Jacobian at 1 1 will be a 1 1 and so on. So, we have uh, Jacobian uh, at uh, 1 1. So, Jacobian at 1 1 um, f 1 at 1 1. So, let us so this basically means that Jacobian f 1 at 1 1 and uh, f 2 at 1 1. So, do not get confused huh? and minus of lambda i this determinant this determinant must be 0. Right. So, from here basically we will get uh, 3 minus lambda minus 1 then minus 1 minus lambda and minus 1 and then uh, 1 minus lambda equals to 0. So, from here we will get lambda square minus of 4 lambda plus 2 and therefore, we will get lambda equals to uh, 2 plus minus square root of 2. So, plus minus square root of 2 is um, basically uh, square root of 2 is 1.414 and uh, you have 2. So, the lambda 1 is always positive and lambda 2 is again positive and therefore, in this case you are getting an unstable solution. So, it is very easy to also verify if you instead of working with the original equation, 
you work with the uh, transformed one right and if you don't want to follow this alternate method then our usual rule that we have derived that you check with the jacobian if the trace is less than 0 or, or not and if the determinant is positive or not so in that case he was remaining in the original setting but if you want to come back to this capital x1 and capital x2 setting so basically you treat it as a system of equation and all those coefficients they can be determined at the equilibrium points at each equilibrium points and then you form this uh, as a linear system and from there also if the solution of this uh, transformed equation is unstable uh, if the equilibrium point leading to unstable solution so then in that case uh, the same thing will happen to the original problem that will also be an unstable equilibrium point right because either you are working with ab or you are working with origin you are just shifting the origin from uh, shifting the point ab to the origin and then you are checking the stability so like this you can we can solve many uh, we can also work with the second eigen value and uh, see that the uh, that the eigen values are leading to an unstable solution um so this is that and i think uh, uh, we will provide some more problems in your assignment sheet uh, where you can solve and practice and uh, in the linear system as far as the uh, uh, stability is concerned uh, we are concluding up to here so then uh, we talk about stability of uh, a nonlinear system and uh, we'll see um, how the theorems and the examples and problems look like so i will stop here today and uh, we'll conclude our section uh, with this example and uh, i'll look forward to see you in the next class